Okay, so uh, then this is a slide that came up yesterday about we're all talking about transforming, uh, society's transforming into this network of networks. The citizens are all going into um, networks and they want things done now and locally. Uh, governments are moving from silo to citizen centric joined up government where they have seamless experiences and if, if it's all going local and it's all going um, citizen centric and this, is, this has been some discussions we've had with some, some groups of councils and CEOs and officers in the last few months. If it's all going that way, we're saying that local government needs to have a key, you know, a key role in, in defining this uh, new, new way of doing business for government. Um, and the, the only question that councils have is, are they going to be leaders or waiters in that process? So, um, in terms of the uh, principles for the future, and again, this is just, just summarising some of the thoughts. If we're saying that the public sector does need to become more productive, more responsive, more more, uh, more, more representative. Um, the principles obviously are that the three levels of government do need to work more collaboratively so the citizens have that seamless experience. Uh, we, 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 we've seen the need to move towards open government. Um, we've seen the need for citizens to be able to more easily interact with government. Many citizens will prefer increasingly online services. There is a need for more consistent uh, data models so the citizens do just get that one point of truth rather than 50 answers depending upon, who they, uh, depending upon whom they ask. Um, so the better way, just in, in summary, just looking at what's happening around Australia and all the reports and reviews, etc., the better way of the public sector that might operate, and this is just putting a bit of a straw man position to the, to the Commission for consideration, they may completely disagree with it or might decide to amend it, but just in summary, some of the key elements of a straw man position of a better way for, for, um, the, local, for, the, for the public sector to be uh, Sort of set up with local government taking a, a sort of lens of that uh, that future is one that, it's, that it becomes more community driven, um, and obviously councils have a key role in that uh, that process so that uh, they can better understand uh, what are the local community priorities of their communities. The second one is we need to move from the um, the funding model which we currently have, which is thousands of buckets of funding descending upon communities but not actually meeting their needs, to more of a much much more untied uh, funding arrangement whereby. Uh, there's a local treasury formed um, and uh, much more discretion by uh, the local and regional uh, sort of stakeholders of government, which should be probably more managed by local governments than by other levels of government, uh, much more discretion about um, how that funding is actually allocated to meeting those identified community priorities. So the principle of moving from tied funding to untied funding with more local discretion and councils playing a much stronger role in that process, we think is something that should be put on the table as a major point for the future of the public sector. Uh, the third one is the scope of local government activities has been increasing by 30 to 40% over the last 20 years. It will probably continue to increase as we've heard from Jackie with all the cutbacks and other uh, levels of government. So uh, what does local government do about that? You know, do we need to define core and non-core activities? And the core ones are the ones that are funded. The non-core ones are, are the perhaps activities that we can't fund uh, and we have to find some more perhaps innovative and crowdsourcing arrangements to be able to make those happen in conjunction with community participation. So um, that, that concept of the defining the scope of activities that are going to be supported financially. The fourth one is, is there a better way? When we met with the corporate services directors of about 30 or 40 councils uh, last month, they said one of the first things we need to do is to define which are the best things that are done at the state level, which are the best things that should be managed at the, at the regional level, which things should be managed at the, at the local level. And the councils need to be the ones who sit around the table and make those judgments in the first instance, it, perhaps in conjunction with state government, uh, regional <coughs> departments in the second instance. So the first thing is, um, you know, we need to just stop, stop us assuming that every sort of council has to be doing everything. Perhaps we have some smarter ways where well, there's 10 or 20 things we can do at the regional level, and there's some things we should be doing at the statewide level. So that, that sort of discussion we don't tend to have. It's never on a council agenda, never on the MOV agenda, never on the, um, the agenda of, just of the ALGO. The next one is coming up with this digital business strategy. If we are moving into digital government, digital society, we need to come up with a digital business strategy. And uh, that's currently being planned. Or they're starting to plan. Um, we are looking at these concept of regional one-stop shops, which a few of these reviews around Australia have recommended that if we are coming up with some regional uh, sort of activities that are best done at the regional level, then uh, local government uh, sh sort of should be the ones that sit around the table and actually uh, identify how those regional structures should be set up. 
uh, to actually deliver those services at the regional level, rather than having the state government say, you know, that perhaps they'll be the ones who make those decisions. We think that local government should be saying, this is how we think it should happen, uh, that the, you know, the, the uh, following 10 things should be managed at the regional uh, basis, and that these regional one-stop shops should be set up, which are perhaps owned by local government and supported by the state governments, and, and it's hopefully with some resources to support them. Um, and the information management, uh, we do need to have um, much better, much better information management. It's an absolute disaster uh, across local government at the moment, where each council does things differently. It can't be aggregated. It takes the state and federal governments years to get the, the data to be assembled. Uh, that's going to be going out the window. So we do need much smarter ways of managing. And the first, or well, the starting point of that is for each council to decide itself to manage for a single point of truth in relation to all those functions. So depending upon who you ask, there's only one answer. You know, you're not asking for 20 people about some data about roads and getting, and getting 20 different answers. You get one answer because it's just one point of truth for each of those, those functions. So just, that's just a quick snapshot. The last one, obviously, uh, when we do identify what can be done at the regional level, um, there is some uh, uh, discussion then around what is the low hanging fruit in terms of the you know, perhaps early projects, the early adopters that can move down the track in terms of regional collaboration. So, None of this is easy, but we just thought that they'd be some of the things that uh, would be suggested starting points in terms of a transition over the next five years or so. Thank okay, you. John, thank you very much. My name's Raphael from Manningham City Council. So just based on what I'm hearing, are we getting to a point where we're advocating for a fourth level of government, a regional level of government in Australia? Is, is that sort of what's coming through as a message here? Because I think, you know, that. That's what is coming across, so I think that's something that the uh, panel, the commission may want to uh, propose that. Well, no, I don't know if we want to propose that because I don't know what the, the market is for a fourth level of government, but that seems to be a bit of a picture that's emerging. Um, just a couple of other comments, sorry, was about that, that differentiating. Are we differentiating ourselves and saying, okay, we're, we're only local? And in that picture of defining ourselves as local, are we thinking beyond financial capital? Are we thinking about the human and social capital? Yes, I have an academic background, sorry, giving myself away. Um, and I guess also the connecting the dots, which has come part through in a lot of this discussion around collaboration. How do we connect the dots um, when we have all these cultural issues, um, when it is a matter of leadership, politics and power? How do you connect those dots equitably? Um, Maybe we need to think about the model of elected representatives and start asking questions about that model. Is that what's holding us back when we're thinking about our sustainable future? Thank you. Becky next, and then over there. Thanks to both of you, cheers. And uh, 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 we heard from um, Malcolm about the Daniel Collide and uh, I to uh, at the forum I went to last night in the Supreme Court with Justice Supreme and the Supreme Court on Magna Carta dating back to 1215, which um, where the leaders, political leaders at the time, forced King John to the party to say that uh, the, the, the sovereign would be subject to the to the rule of law, and that was translated in contemporary terms to governments being subject to the rule of law. Now, um, uh, we've got the state, so I want to bring us back to the relationships with the state and federal governments. I think we've got state local government agreements uh, in all states, and we've got a federal uh, local government agreement signed by, I assume, the Prime Minister uh, and Elder. Uh, but they're honoured in the breach in so many ways. I just wonder whether we need a new Magna Carta to redefine our relationships with the other tiers of government that, that isn't just an agreement put in the top drawer, as a lot of plans and policies are in, in federal and state uh, governments, um, but that we actually have one that we, we enforce and we hold both tiers to account on enforcement of those so that we're not we don't have decisions with impact on our funding that, that, in, that we don't have any consultation contrary to those agreements and how do we go about doing that how do we assert ourselves our autonomy and force the other tiers of government to actually act in the interest of the community uh, when they're acting for sexual interests <coughs> I 
advanced pyramid show. I just want to uh, clear what I've got some confusion in my mind. We're talking about regional collaboration. Pyramid Shire is part of the Central Highlands Group of Councils, one of seven which have been set up in Victoria, as I understand. Our mayors and CEOs meet on a bi-monthly occasion and we set our priorities for what we think we need in our region. We act together, we go to state government and we approach to get the politicians, we go to federal government as a united group. It's already happening out there, I believe. I see it happening, as I understand it, in seven areas of Victoria. I'm not sure how the metropolitan works with it, whether they can work with them <coughs> one another, but our rural councils certainly work together. Okay, Carl Ogrego, uh, Mayor of the da Darabin City Council. I just had two uh, points that I wanted to make. One is in relation to the, um, uh, we've seen over yesterday and today that local government has to deal with the, the cost imperatives of, of local government. So, we, so we're actually thinking in terms of <coughs> how to manage ourselves within this new uh, cost restraints. And, um, and I'd just like the Commission to, to think about um, how local government can actually think a little bit beyond that, because otherwise we're, we're thinking in terms of how to basically restrict the role of like, local government and play it into the agenda of both the, of both the other two tiers of government. So, so I've thought about that. And the second point to link that links with that is a, an important point. It's interesting to see that in the UK, notwithstanding the cuts in local government, but the satisfaction levels or the trust levels of local government is very, very high. So how do we leverage off that in order to uh, reposition local government as a, uh, a, a, as a tier of government that has the highest level of trust amongst its, uh, amongst its constituents? And so how do we leverage off that to push ourselves out of this current debate that we're in where we have to constantly try and manage with, with less as imposed from the other two tiers of government. Um, yep, I'm just going to label what I said before. I want information to be delivered to us, simple, without any convoluted sort of crap. I want it to be true and honest and straight, and I want it to be so everyone can understand it. I don't want it to be dressed up. I just want truth, and I want it kept simple. 